What's up, everything, Medicare Podcast Nation? This is Christian Brindle. Hope you're doing well, wherever you are and however you may be listening. I hope that you're having a fantastic day, week, and going into the weekend, I hope it's just nothing but peaches and cream. Today, I have a really, really interesting guest with me. I've just been really looking forward to doing this episode for you. This is episode 120, and I have Joanna... Wyckoff? Is that right, Joanna? Wyckoff. Thank you. I got it right. I didn't think I would. Um, mm-hmm. Joanna is someone that I just, when, w- once I heard a little bit about Joanna's story, you know, through mutual connections and things like that, I just knew I had to have her on and kind of talk a little bit about her story and her experiences. And I thought that you, the audience, would benefit from it dramatically. Um, Joanna was in the Air Force, so thank you for your service, Joanna. Um, thank you. And Joanna worked as a claim specialist for the Social Security Administration. Now Joanna has transitioned into being an agent, same as myself, um, working with people on Medicare in all different situations, assisting the senior community. Um, And she now owns the Georgia Senior Solutions Network Agency. Um, Joanna, thank you for joining me. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Um, well, let's start out with this. Your, your story fascinates me, like I said. You know, as somebody, <laughs> Thank you. As somebody that you know, has such a unique background as you in so many different areas, you know, from the Air Force down to Social mm-hmm. Security, talk about how did you become an insurance agent itself? What, what led to the transition? Okay, well, it, you know, it's kind of like a roundabout. You know, when I got out of the Air Force, um, I had a disability. I got injured in the Air Force, um, and they put me on a temporary medical retirement. So when I came to Georgia, um, I was looking for, um, you know, um, something that was not manual labor, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I had actually met an insurance company at a job fair, and this was in 2007, and I had gone through the 40-hour live course uh, Monday through Friday. Um, and then I just didn't have the, um, I, I didn't trust the company. So I didn't go take the licensing, even though I had like a temporary license. Um, so anyways, I started working for social security, uh, in 2010 and I quickly climbed the ladder there and everything and, you know, fell in love with being a claim specialist and helping people get their benefits. Um, as a claim specialist, you know, working at social security, we see people through all their walks of life. We see them at their happiest moments and at their saddest moments, you know? Oh, I can imagine. And one of the hardest things was to see so many people. I would take so many claims for disability and for death. And so many people didn't have any disability insurance. Um, They didn't know about disability insurance. I mean, I saw so many families that were financially devastated and became homeless because somebody didn't take care of that, right? And right. presented with insurance company in 2016. Presented, I was looking for a way to pay off my master's. So like, oh, I could do that part and still keep my federal job, you know, and help community and make sure that people have disability insurance before they get to my desk, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I started with life insurance, disability insurance, um, and then I was pre- presented with a kind of like you about Medicare, like how do you do really? So you want to and part A and part, um, but you should be able to help people with other you know needs, their supplements, their prescriptions, right? And so looking into that, I was like this is more my alley. And then it just evolved and I left social security this past December to just do Medicare a hundred percent. Well, very cool. Congratulations. I remember what it felt like when I left my job officially after, you know, transitioning Mm -hmm. over a period of time into going full time. And it's an awesome feeling because then you're like, okay, this is what I do. Right. Um, and, Yeah. It's it, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. And that's how you know you're in a situation where you can really help people full time. Um, 
talk about mm -hmm. your time with Social Security, though. As, as a claim specialist, what, what were some of your duties and what are some things that you did there as a claim specialist? Like, describe that job description, if you will. If I was going to start working for Social Security sure. as a claim specialist, what would I be doing? <laughs> So claim specialists in a local field office, they basically do every function in that office. You're expected to know everything. Mm -hmm. um, so because I started off in the front doing like changes of addresses and fixing missing checks, um, accounting reports and things like that. And then when I got my promotion to claim specialist, I would take disability claims and SSI age claims. SSI was one of my specialties. Um, I would take disability claims and then I would see it through completion. So I would, you know, take the claim and send it over to the state for a decision. And once this had to contact them and pay them and all how to do annual reviews uh, for SSI. SSI is a needs-based program and had to um, annual reviews and make sure people still met source criteria. Um, and then because we were in a very large metro office, I had to learn the retirement portion. I had to learn the Medicare portion. Mm -hmm. And so I would take claims all day. And whenever someone had an issue, I had to be the one to research policy and figure out a, a fix. And uh, Social Security systems are not um, 2019 systems. <laughs> <laughs> so they're still, you know, in the dinosaur ages, right? Yeah. Um, so we basically did almost all the functions to serve everybody. Well, very cool. It sounds like you're a jack of all trades. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, me, let me transition into this. You kind of mentioned the social security systems kind of being older, if you will, and kind of hindering some work. My next yeah. question kind of transitions perfectly into that. Um, for me personally, you know, and, and I, th I think a lot of people look at it this way. Mm -hmm. From the outside looking in, a lot of people view Social Security as a little bit unorganized. Why do you think that is as someone that's been on the inside? What, what, why do people seem to have that perspective? Because there's a lot of real smart people working for Social Security, people like you. And, you know, I've, I know a lot of people that work for Social Security, all incredibly bright people. Why does it have that perception? Mm-hmm. Oh, systems are still on an old query system, and they're, you, you kind of have to look in five different places to decipher what's going on. And so your record is in a query, and it's all in code. And ah. to learn the code is very meticulous, right? So yeah. every, every code has a meaning, and it's very meticulous. And if you don't know how to read every code and say, you know, I didn't get my check this month or whatever, and they, like, look at the record, they have to be able to read the codes and see where the check went, and then they have to go check a different system to see where it was mailed from. It's just very mishmash, you know? It really mm -hmm. is. They're, they're updating the systems, but they're not updating the systems fast enough, and it's not plain English, yeah. you know? Um, so... Um, you know, there's two types of programs that Social Security manages, the one that we work and pay into, and then the needs-based one. Well, those are two different, completely different records, and it's like you have to read, you have to flip back and forth between it to figure out what is what, and it's just so, it's so difficult. And then there, um, you know, people will say, well, I already brought this in. I already brought this in. Well, you know, I can't search everybody's desk high and low. That's and right. The, yeah. the scan process is not efficient, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just, it truly is a mess, but they don't want to yeah. spend a lot of money on technology. Um, they, they, they are upgrading some of the systems to a web-based system. Um, but even that was like, when you call and change your address, if you get a check on the first and a check on the third, I have to change it two times. And if you're a, pre a representative payee for somebody, I had to go into a different system to change that, oh you know? My and so, like, if a mother was receiving benefits and then she was receiving benefits for her children, that would be, like, you know, you're going in to change the address, like, multiple times, right? Right. And so it's really easy to forget to change an address on one person's record, you yeah. know? 
I mean, it, and then and then their check would be missing, you know. Oh <laughs> so, gosh. Oh right? my goodness. <laughs> so it's very tedious, but it's very hard um, to know everything about everything. I mean, I was there for nine and a half years, and I was still learning new things. You know. Um, now imagine someone just being there for a year, and you know they don't have a complete grasp on the codes and everything. They they might give you incorrect information. Well, then you call back and you talk to somebody else, and they give you different information because they only read a different record. You know, right. they might have read they might have read one record and not the other record, right? Right. So, right. Well, it's that, complicated. That that makes a that makes a lot of sense to me, and I always figured it was something like that. But I I I can also imagine the number of people they have to keep track of as well just doesn't it adds probably to the problem would you agree yeah um i do agree with that and then the people never stop coming so there's <laughs> yeah. really no time there's real there is no downtime um you know we we are a hundred percent the moment you touch the door you know you have fires to put out you know people's lives are depending on you to show up to work every day yeah. You know, I mean, like there was literally days I went to work on a Saturday just because I had people who were literally dying waiting for me to process their Medicaid. Oh, my you know? God. Right. Yeah. So it was very, it's a lot of work, not enough people. Uh, we're chronically understaffed. Uh, it's a very hard job to find good talent, people who can actually. So the job is very tedious and a lot of people can't um, retain a lot of that information. Now. You know, one girl right before I left, she had gotten hired. Uh, she was a veteran also, and she quit after three weeks because oh, she was wow. like, I, I just can't do it. She's like, I, I don't know how you guys do it, you know. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it is tedious. Um, and then, you know, sometimes the public uh, doesn't give us a chance to research or give them an answer it's you know they they uh, are very upset when they call in a lot of times and i don't blame yeah. them you know like when your check is missing and you are late on rent and the rent office is trying to charge you more money i understand you know yeah but it's very really hard it's really hard to work under that type of pressure as well oh no question so, i mean that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense and you know i think i think people take for granted you know the tremendous amount of you know uh, chaos that probably goes on there at a daily basis, you know. Yeah, I imagine they and probably have a pretty big revolving door with employees too. So a lot of federal employees come to Social Security and they do stay. Okay. Um, okay. When I was there at Social Security, no one had left to quit the government except one, and it was for a better agency. I think she went over oh, to the CDC. You know? I see. Um, I was one of the first ones to like actually leave, yeah. um, voluntarily. <laughs> um, yeah. Everybody else had gotten in a little trouble, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But most people, when they get a government job, they're instructed or they're perceived as you got a government job, you can't let it go, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, that makes sense. You know, even my, my dad told me to to stick it out another twenty years, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. you, you got to stick it out. That that pension. I was like, Dad, the pensions are gone. Yeah, you know, they've got yeah. our pensions. <laughs> yeah. So, but it it is a lot of work, and the the expectations are very high. Um, it's not like we're compet uh, compet They expect us to do almost every function in that office. And they're trying to make everybody a jack of all trades there, like you said, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it's just with their systems, the expectations are very high. And they're like you said, they are very disorganized. It's easy for paperwork to be misplaced. I was very frustrated when one of my clients would say that they dropped off paperwork that I needed. And they said they gave it to somebody else and I don't have it. And yeah. now I have to have them to redo it, you know. But most social security employees are very passionate about helping the people mm -hmm. and they want you to get the benefits that you deserve um like none of us were in my office were malicious you know yeah. um we like if your check was off five cents i would sit there and try to figure out where that five cents was you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. we're very we're all very much perfectionists and you have to have that type of personality to be a perfectionist because 
if it was wrong, then it's simply wrong, even if it's off a couple cents, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so people like most of the employees do want everybody to receive the benefits that they're due. It's just not everybody has the the capacity to know what they're talking about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel <laughs> that like was, that was the frustrating part. That make, it makes a total sense to me completely. I mean, I feel like mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot like Medicare. I see people come into our business with Medicare and, you know, it's years before they really feel like they know, have a full grasp on everything. You know, there's always new things. There's to a learn. lot of pieces. A lot yeah. of pieces. A lot of working parts. A lot parts. of pieces. And your exposure will determine how much you actually know. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're only exposed to a piece of the business, then you're not going to know the other piece. Like if you don't deal with very low income people, you might not know the, what we call the dual market yeah. you know, with people who have both Medicare and Medicaid. And if you don't deal with a higher income clientele, you might not know Irma or fully understand that, you know, that adjustment, you know, yeah. So yeah, yeah. a lot of different things. <laughs> yeah. No question. Um What's up, everybody? This is actually Randy W. Hall, Mr. Nice Guy Medicare Advisor, not Christian Brendel, your esteemed host. I'm here to tell you about my Medicare agency, Mr. Nice Guy Medicare Advisor, based here in Tennessee. For the past 10 years, I've been helping Medicare beneficiaries just like you in Tennessee and Kentucky maximize their Medicare. If you're a regular listener of this podcast, you know Christian always encourages you to deal with a broker in your state who sells all the different plans and will give you not just a quote, but also advise you and educate you in a way that is simple to understand. We know how confusing and overwhelming the whole process can be. We do it all for folks on Medicare, from supplements to Advantage plans, Part D, cancer products, hospital indemnities, and more. So if you want to get a free quote or a consultation, I urge you to call 615-578-5174. Again, that's area code 615-578-5174. Or for more information, you can visit my website and read all about me at MrNiceGuyMedicareAdvisor.com. That's all one word, MrNiceGuyMedicareAdvisor.com. And again, why deal with a jerk? when you can deal with a nice guy. Let, let me shift gears to this then, and this is a question mm -hmm. I, I was really, really interested to, to ask you. For, so, like I mentioned, as someone working on the inside for Social Security, what is something that you learned there that if the public knew, like if there was one thing off the top of your head that if you, you know, that if you could tell people about working with the Social Security office that would maybe make their lives easier that you would know from someone on the inside, what would that one thing be that you could tell them? If there's anything on that you can think of? Yeah, so a lot of people look at Social Security as a big mean government. Mm -hmm. And we're just, you know, daughters and brothers and sisters of, you know, regular people, you know? And so the, we're not like Comcast where you have to call and scream at a you know, call center overseas or anything like that. Yeah. So, and I'm I'm using we like I still work there. I quit. <laughs> but a lot of people don't realize like like if you turn in a form, okay, just redo it, bring it in, walk it in. I prefer walking everything in. Mm -hmm. I worked there long enough to know. <laughs> you know, people be like, oh, I'm just gonna mail in my Medicare application. I'm like, Man, you're gonna be waiting. Yeah. You know, um, I I don't trust the agency enough to process things timely enough. Um, some offices are great and some are very understaffed and it might sit on someone's desk, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, most of the people that work at Social Security, like I said, do have a heart for the people and a heart to be public servants. Um, so if they ask you for a form, even if you gave it to them five times, you know, they're really asking just because they're trying to help you. They're not trying to be malicious and everything. Nobody shredded your file. Mm -hmm. um, intentionally anyway. Um, but you know, paperwork does get lost. It, unfortunately they don't control the post office. And you know, if you mail in your Medicare application and it's sitting on someone's desk and they've been out with um, a pneumonia or something like that, you know, it, things happen, you know, it's not malicious. Yeah. Um, to just resubmit it, you know, 
And I, I hear that complaint all the time of like, I've given you this multiple times. Why isn't it done? Why isn't it done? And I mean, nobody else has the answer for that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the mail, the mail is received very 1980 style. I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Like the mail is re- comes in by the local post office person and it's sorted by management and put in someone's mailbox and then it's put on someone's desk. You know, yeah. it's not like it's scanned into a system or anything like that until it's processed. So if you said, well, I mailed in something last week, I mean, it's probably sitting on someone's desk divided by, you know, your alphabet or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why a lot of people don't know is the system is not high tech, <laughs> yeah. you yeah. know, it's, it's not. <laughs> yeah. And, and that makes a lot of sense too. And, you know, I think people, you know, they associate social security with the government, a faceless Mm -hmm. giant, you know, government, almost corporation like, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand that, like you said, these are people's children, people's brothers, sisters, parents, you know, um, and anytime there's humans involved, there's going to be human error. Right. Mm -hmm. And everybody does it. Human. So, and that's another thing. Um, we, everything we do is human input, really. Mm-hmm. And if I, if I keyed an error in round, it could affect everything. And, you know, things happen, you know. And not everybody's knowledge is um, exactly 100%, you know. Yeah. They're trying to balance a whole big encyclopedia of knowledge, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's not malicious if it's wrong. Just be like, "Hey, Miss Ward and Miss Wacker, my last name was Ward over there. Yeah. You know, um, my check. I thought it was gonna be that. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, where I, you know, um, had hey, been waiting for this. You know, um, but some people would be like, I turned that into the downtown office. And I'm like, well, you called a different office. I can't see someone mm-hmm. else's desk. I don't yeah. know where it's at, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, and, you got to call over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it, it makes a lot of sense, you know, and I think I think people don't take the time to think about that as much as they should, you know, and it's a big job, like you said, you know, it's a big mm-hmm. job, a lot of responsibility, and, you know, that makes a lot of sense that, you know, under staff, they have you guys do a lot of things, and, you know, because mm-hmm. cause like I said, you know, lot, I've met a lot of smart people that work at Social Security, mm-hmm. a lot of them. You know, and I know it's mm-hmm. not, I know it's not, I think most people realize it's not the people, you know, mm-hmm. that work there. There's a lot of smart, good people that work there. Yeah, it's, a, and it's very unorganized, like you said, like, I mean, I had dozens of ideas on how to make the processes better, and the management are, think about it, most of the managers there are getting ready to retire, so they're not you know, millennials who are, yeah. you know, um, tech savvy. Yeah. Um, a lot of them still remember the paper files from 1980, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and a, a lot of them don't like change, you know? Um, so a lot of it has to do with that. Um, and I mean, they ha- they, I mean they, when I left after nine and a half years in 2019, they still were not allowing us to telework. Every other agency I know is teleworking. My friends yeah. at the VA are teleworking. My friends at the IRS are teleworking. You know, but they could not figure out how to let us telework for even an hour. You know, and yeah. um, it's just the technology, and they're behind the times. They really are. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, well, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Well, let's talk about Medicare for a minute now. Okay. That's okay. my favorite subject. Yes, and mine as well. <laughs> mine as well. Um, so talk about um, how did working for Social Security in, help you better equi- – how, let, me, let me rephrase the question. Would, would you say working for Social Security better equipped you to work with people on their Medicare? Like did it kind of cut the learning curve quite a bit? And if so, how so? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So it did cut a large portion of the learning curve that I'm seeing now. I have a few agents under me and I'm training them and I have to realize that they don't have a background 
they don't know um, all about the A's and the B's and the QMB's and all yeah, of our language, yeah. you know? Yeah, Medicaid um, levels and, you know. And, right, um, so coming from Social Security, um, from the federal side, I had a basic idea of what A and B covered. Um, they, they don't go into depth. Uh, I mean, I didn't really know that, you know, some drugs were part B's so if the doctor did it, right? We didn't yeah. know all that. They don't give us any training. They do not give us any training on what Medicare covers. We are instructed mm -hmm. to tell them to call Medicare directly. Mm -hmm. um, but I was an expert at Medicare enrollment periods. Um, what is Very IT helpful. For yes. Very helpful in our um, business. <laughs> Um, IEP versus Part B SEP mm -hmm. um, and things like that. So I had a good understanding of that. Um, I processed extra help applications. So I had a firm understanding of how to help people get um, prescriptions and save a lot of money that way. Um, the QMB program, which is the Medicare Savings Program, um, I already knew about that and the different levels and had a really good understanding because um, we referred people over to the Medicaid office every day. And it's crazy. I would probably see a good 10 people a day that qualified for QMB that didn't have it, mm -hmm. you know. And it was just crazy the amount of people who were missing those entitlements. And unless someone looked at their record through all those queries, because you have to go through multiple queries uh, to see that they didn't have state buy-in, you know, and mm -hmm. so a lot of people think that it's automatic and it's not, you know. Yeah, no way. No way. And so there's just so many people who are still missing that entitlement, right? And so unless they're sitting with an agent like you and I who are asking the income questions, they might not, not get the benefits that they can get, right? Right. So, so, yeah, I had a full understanding of that. So knowing those really set me up and because we research policy that was part of the main job um research and policy and reading through you know the test that we go through with the a hit mm -hmm. and then we have to go through certifications each certification, and, yeah that wasn't a big deal to me because you know we read so much we policy after policy every day and one word can change an entire meaning oh you no know? Quote. yeah yeah <laughs> And Change an entire so, definition. Mm -hmm. um, like today, somebody showed me a letter where she was like, she's panicking. I, w I was uh, running appointments and she was panicking because she said her extra help um, amount was going up. And she was like, look, I used to pay $1.25 for my prescriptions. Now they're saying $3.40. Why is that? And I'm reading the letter and it says, you may pay up to $3.40, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. just that one word, you know? Yeah. Anyway, so, um, so I had a really good background in that. Um, and I try to share it, you know, with as many people as possible. Um, so the only portion that I really had to grasp was the C's, the D's, <laughs> yeah. the supplements. And underwriting, underwriting can be tricky, you know that? Yes. Um, you know, if I can, you know, can I get someone who has rheumatoid arthritis on a supplement, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, the special enrollment periods for our Part C&D. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, helping people um, market compliantly, you know, um, CMS, mm -hmm. I didn't know this until I became an agent about how hard CMS makes it as, for agents to help people, you know, like you have to ask me, I can't even tell you I really do Medicare, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like I have to wear a pin that says ask me because yeah. I can't tell you, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, I had a good portion of it, you know, and I think it really laid the foundation for that. It makes a lot of sense, though, and I think, you know, it's a unique pers it's a unique situation you're in to be able to help other agents to better help the consumers and help consumers yourself, you know. Um, let, let, yeah. me, let, me, let me shift gears over to this. So for me personally, I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure you, you know, have the same approach when you're mm -hmm. working with people on Medicare. For me personally, I'm always looking at a needs approach basis when I'm working with a client yeah. of mine. I take a look mm -hmm. at the person's situation. I take all my personal biases and throw them out the window. 
what mm-hmm. is your personal process when you're working with a client? How do you break down their, their options to find the best fit for them? What, what do you look for? So I have a complete questionnaire I do for myself, a, a client intake sheet. And so I look at uh, for what they have, of course, you know, and then I look at their income to see if I can get them any assistance programs. I look to see if they're a veteran. I look to see if they have any chronic illnesses. And then I ask them, what is your, what, what is your goal? You know, and because people will tell you what they've been looking for and what they've heard from their neighbors, you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I had two people today um, who had teacher retirement um, supplements, you know, but they needed help with their prescription, right? Yeah. The prescriptions were the ones who were killing them. I mean, one lady was paying $13,000 a year for prescriptions, you know, <laughs> I mean, crazy. Yeah. Um, so people will tell you what's the pain for them. Um, and that's where you really need to listen, you know, cause a lot of people might have walked at the door if they couldn't fix the, if they couldn't get the supplement, right. Cause it's a teacher's retirement. She was paying like $80 for her supplement through her employer for the teacher's retirement. Right. Mm-hmm. And you, you would never want to take someone off of coverage like that. <laughs> so yeah. a lot of people would have been like, Oh, um, you have good stuff. Bye. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, just knowing the difference in coverages, like another, um, guy I sat with today had, federal blue cross like i used to have you know and just chatting to see what he was really looking for um and because a lot of people don't know what they have versus what's out there Mm -hmm. and they just really want an understanding of you know they see all these commercials and everything and they don't know if what the commercials are saying is what they should have they don't understand why they're in what they're in you know so it's just having a conversation of okay this is what you have now what are you looking for and why are you looking for that? I like it. I like it. I think mm-hmm. it's a. I think it's really important, and I don't think it's a topic that gets brought up enough in our industry. You know, it's not mm-hmm. so much hitting quotas or necessarily being, you know, having an agenda pushing one plan mm-hmm. or the other. It's it's finding a plan for that person. You know, sitting mm-hmm. down with them, seeing what they need, what they don't need, and you know, and those kind of things. A hundred percent. I like, I like the approach. Um, okay. So I have to ask this question. I've asked every single person that's come on to be interviewed with me. It's Uh so I'm going to put you in the hot seat a little bit. okay? Okay. Um, obviously there's no politically correct answer to this. And obviously, um, it's a kind of ironic that I asked this question after the last question, but, um, (laughs) You're not, and obviously, I'm doing all these disclaimers, no, and I'm doing all these disclaimers, and obviously, no, to, you know, you, 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 um, there's no situation where you recommend the same thing for everybody. I have to say all this, otherwise people come back and say, well, Christian said, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Um, but if you had to pick one side mm-hmm. or the other, mm-hmm. would you go supplements or Medicare Advantage and why? If you had what to pick. What state do I live in? You're, the state you live in now. Georgia, right? All right, Georgia. Okay. So if I had to pick, and um, so I, I, for myself, I would select a supplement because I would rather pay a fixed price knowing that I'm completely covered and not get a surprise bill, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I've done the math. In Georgia, Medicare Advantage uh, max out of pocket is $6,700, right? Mm-hmm. Well, a 65-year-old supplement is usually about $120 here in Georgia. 120 times 12 is what, 1,500? Can't yeah. do the math in my head anymore. Give, round that, <clears throat> give or take. All right, so 6,700 minus 1,500. That's a big savings of a fixed, of a fixed copay, knowing that I can go to any doctor that takes Medicare. I don't have any surprise bills, right? Mm-hmm. And I can move throughout the country because I like to travel. Um, yes. It's peace of mind for me, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, <laughs> you know, serving at social security, I know everybody's situation is not that, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people cannot right. afford the $120 a month. Um, I, I've served people who are literally homeless, you know, I've served homeless to millionaires. I've served celebrities and everything. So it, it is that, you know, you have to look at their ability to, um, to pay. And so if they, they had no ability to pay anything extra other than 
the 135 or if they had got the Medicare savings program, you know, they really can't afford anything, but maybe they're, you know, a couple of dollars in prescriptions, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but if, if money was not a huge object, I, I would choose the supplement. Um, just, just, you know, at my current income and everything now, it's just peace of mind, no surprise bills. I, I can go to the hospital I want, any doctor mm-hmm. I want. I mean, we've spent days looking up um, doctors' networks and stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. I was just on the phone with someone in Pennsylvania, and her doctor's not in anybody's network except this one special um, hospital plan. And I'm like, I'm going to pass you over to a local Pennsylvania agent because I don't write them, you know. I was mm-hmm. like, Humana doesn't take it, Aetna doesn't take that doctor. And, oh, well, that doctor doesn't take anybody. Let me just phrase it like that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then somebody told me tonight that some of the doctors didn't want to even mess with insurance. And we've seen that before. Yeah. So, you know, it was in one of our groups the other day where this doctor, somebody, somebody in some doctor's office said that Medicare Advantage was trash because of how they pay them, you know? And so, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, oh, that's it's, what... it's gonna have me a heart attack you know <laughs> with with when it's, people make those statements um, no it's nightmares but i i do love medicare supplements now mm-hmm. my first client ever um had metastatic breast cancer Oof. and she passed a month and a half after i wrote her medicare advantage mm-hmm. you know oh. so when i when i saw her she would never have qualified for a supplement you know yeah so you also have not just the financial challenges but the health challenges as well yeah. you know um so like i said it's not a perfect uh, solution for everybody's problem because someone might be able to afford the supplement but they might not medically qualify for the supplement right right um, right but I like the answer. I like the answer Thank still. I did, I, I, did, I did a podcast several weeks ago at the beginning of the enrollment period where I put myself on the hot seat and I answered the question. Because mm-hmm. I've asked everybody mm-hmm. that's came on the podcast the question. I said, if you had okay. to pick, obviously, there, you know, there's no side that's going to work for everybody. But if you had to mm-hmm. pick one or the other, which way would you go? And everybody that's come on except for one person that said supplements. Every single did that person live in South Florida? They didn't, act, ironically. They actually lived where I live in Utah. Okay. Which, which South Florida has a lot of good vintage plans. Fantastic, plans. fantastic. <laughs> Miami, Miami. I have, I have, I have a lot of clients there myself. I, you know, probably wouldn't do a supplement for someone down there, but <laughs> no, 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 no point at that point, right? But right. But um, yeah. I mean, like you said, it's it's all based on fit. You know, it's all based on fit. Mm-hmm. And I like the way you answered the question, though. What state am I living in? <laughs> That's the first time I heard that. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and, and it makes a lot next- of sense. It's, it makes a lot of sense, though. I mean, it's a good, it's a good follow-up question. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, Joanna, um, talk a little bit about Georgia Senior Solutions. What states can you work with people in? I know you work mm-hmm. with a lot of a lot of states, and wow. this podcast is listened to nationwide. So oh. it, how, how, can, how can people get in touch with you guys, with you and your company, if, you, if they'd like mm-hmm. to work with you? Let's say they heard something they really resonated with. Um, how can people get in touch with you? The enrollment period goes on for a little bit o- under a month sure. now. Talk about your company. How can people okay, get in touch great. with you? What states? So I am licensed personally from Florida all the way up to New York and Maine and then um, the southern region, all the way out to California. I leave the upper Midwest alone. I'm not in Utah or Idaho, so don't worry. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm relieved. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, you know, there's just not a lot of people out there for me. Um, right. So you can contact me, 678-823-5365, or Joanna, J-O-A-N-N-A, at G-A, Senior Solutions, with an S at the end, dot com. Um, and I have agents nationwide, except in Utah and Idaho. I don't have anybody out there. Uh-huh. Um, and so we, we cover most of it. We have a huge network. Um, we cover every care you can think of, um, every need you can think of. Um, so I like to think that w- if I can't do it personally, I know somebody who can, you know, um, even if, if I don't have that contract, like the lady in Pennsylvania, I knew exactly who could write her, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the great thing about how we function as networks and stuff is um, we, we tend to help the 
consumer first. It's not it's just like, well, I can't help you. Sorry, you have to call somebody else, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's how it works. That's how things work, you know, well when we're all helping each other to make sure that we're exactly. helping the pe- helping people on Medicare, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Hey, well, Joanna, thank you so much for all your time. I know you probably put in a long day working, mm-hmm. as did I, so I'm sure we're both tired. So I will, I will let you go. But thank you so much for your time, and thank you for all of the wisdom that you shared today. Um, folks, like, um, like Joanna said, if you need help this enrollment period and you're in one of those areas, one of those states, I encourage you to get in touch with her. The enrollment period goes till December 7th. Thank it's you. not too late to compare your plan late. and see if there's a better option. You don't have to settle for less if you don't want to. Um, thank you everybody for listening. We do three podcasts a week. If this is your first time listening, we do them Monday, we do them Wednesday, we do them Saturday. Make sure you're tuning in. If you're listening to us on a platform that allows you to do so, please leave me and my podcast a five-star review. It appreciates us greatly. It helps the algorithms to reach more people just like you who need to hear this information. Until next time, thank you so much. Have a great day.